నువ్వు లైవ్ వెళ్ళకుండా ఎక్కడొచ్చింది నన్ను వెల్కమ్ ఆల్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ హోప్ యూ ఆల్ ఆర్ సేఫ్ అండ్ డూయింగ్ వెల్ టుడేస్ లెక్చర్ ఈజ్ ఆన్ మాడ్యూల్ ఫోర్ దట్స్ ఆన్ ది కంప్రెసర్స్ యాజ్ వి డిస్కస్డ్ ఇన్ ది లాస్ట్ క్లాస్ ద ఫిజిక్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు బి డిస్కస్డ్ ఇన్ కంప్రెసర్స్ the same thing will be valid for the turbines also so i am trying to cover both the modules module 4 and module 5 i will send the separate uh, presentation for module 5 but keep in your mind whatever we are learning for the compressors more or less the same physics is valid for the turbines hope you are already seeing my desktop that's on the compressors contents of the today's session are shown here we will start with uh, some introduction about the compressors then we will spend some time on understanding the various types of the compressors generally used in the aircraft industry then we will spend some time in understanding the spools i uh, you all know that that uh, part of this spool we have already covered in our engines uh, single spool engine multi, uh, two spool engine and three spool engine uh, i am recapturing that once again here then we will uh, understand the compression process here we try to use the uh, ts diagram or hs diagram to understand the isentropic process which happens in the compression compressors then we will uh, spend some time in velocity triangles um, you know in the last propeller section we have used the velocity triangles we try to use the same uh, philosophy here in uh, in understanding the compression process and that's very useful for understanding the uh, work done on the compressors understanding the uh, different relation for the work done in the compressors then uh, we will uh, try to learn something on the uh, eiler turbine equation which is uh, famously known as ete eiler turbine equation we will try to learn the uh, fundamentals and the derivation of the uh, this equation then uh, we will go ahead with the uh, degrees of reaction and the stage loading today probably we will consider only one type uh, that's on the axial compressors maybe in the session 2 i will try to cover the the second type that's on the centrifugal compressors here it is a uh, Uh, this uh, we have shown many times uh, once again i'm trying to show you the different components here you all know this is the uh, turbojet engine in the turbojet engine the first part is the inlet or intake we have already covered this part and we covered the last part also exhaust nozzles then also we covered the combustor these are the kind of the more static parts and today we will concentrate on the second uh, component which is after the intake that is the compressors and it's a uh, the fundamental physics is more or less same thing uh, for the turbines also this is the turbine section okay yeah uh, we all know the the major function of the compressor a compressor is a mechanical device that increases the pressure of a gas by reducing its volume okay the main function here is to supply the air whatever air is required for the combustors combustor burner combustion burners whatever the air is required 
so we need to supply that much air with the required pressure and uh, uh, that uh, compression process involves the temperature raise also so the main function of the compressor is uh, supplying the air to the combustor and here uh, uh, in the turbojet that entire compressor air is uh, supplied to the combustion chamber but whereas in the turbo fan you all know that some portion will be supplied to the bypass section okay in the turbo fan generally we have the bypass section so there the uh, uh, basically okay uh, i can't really see the compressor but uh, after the fan basically the first part we say it's a fan then after we say next uh, next parts we call as the uh, compressors in that case whatever the air it is coming in the compressor that's the entire thing goes to the uh, combustion chamber apart from this uh, fundamental uh, requirement the second requirement is uh, to supply the bleed air probably this is the first time probably you are hearing about the bleed air what does it mean for bleed as the name says uh, we are taking some air taking that is called as a bleeding bleeding the air from the compressor why do we need this bleed air here i just have shown the uh, why do we need the bleed air we all know that uh, cabin pressurization uh, you know the place where we sit and uh, the uh, aircraft fly at the very high altitude high altitudes at at that location air pressure is less so but for the human comforts and all we need to have the um, maintain the pressure whatever is a uh, human is uh, sufficient to have so that's the called as a pressure pre uh, uh, cabin pressurization so air is required for um, uh, the the air which is required for the cabin pressure cabin pressurization is taken from the compressors some places we need heating and some places we need cooling especially electronic cooling we need the air so that uh, that air also you need to take it from the compressor and other thing is deicing and the anti icing equipment as the name says um, um, especially on the wings uh, you need to avoid the icing so for that what what they do is uh, they will take the air from the compressor and that will be heated and that will be supplied for the deicing or anti icing equipment the third requirement is on the uh, pneumatic starting of the engines especially when the start stage of the engines um, you need to take the bleed aid to start the engine sometimes you take from the apu and many times uh, it needs to take from the engine engine starting you need a uh, uh, compressor air basically and uh, apart from that there are many other auxiliary drive units to drive or start those units we need the compressor air so whatever air is required in the aircraft that you are taking from the either for, uh, either from the fan or from the compressors so the main functions of the compressor uh, compressors are supplying the air which is required for the burning and the other part is uh, bleed air it needs to supply the bleed air after understanding the uh, the purpose of the function of the compressor let's understand uh, uh, various types of the compressors we use in the aircraft aircraft industry uh, these are the two major classifications uh, we use in the aircraft industry one is the axial compressors and the second one is the centrifugal compressors it's basically depends on the direction of the air uh, uh, in the first one axial so in the axial air compressors air is allowed to pass through the series of the alternate rows of the rotating blades that i will show you uh, some picture in the next slide what it has is uh, it has the rows of uh, rotating blades in between you will have the fixed blades that's we covered in the last time one rotating blade and one fixed blade we call that as a stage one stage so basically what uh, uh, what it does is we are supplying the energy to the blades that's the rotating blades so through that when the air is uh, uh, flowing through the rotating blades it imparts the energy to the air incoming air so thereby the pressure will increase okay and here 
the important thing you need to uh, keep in mind is the direction of flow the direction of flow is a parallel to the your axis major axis so that's why we call that as the axial axial compressors and these are uh, uh, many uh, um, engines they use the axial compressors they have the uh, some benefits over the centrifugal compressors we will see those things in the next slide and the second type of the compressors are the centrifugal compressors um, as the name says uh, uh, this works on the effect of the centrifuges so here also you will have a rotating component and the stationary component the rotating component we call that as the impeller rotating impeller and here the blades are radial blades and the direction is the axial entry and the radial out that's why we call here uh, this is the centrifugal sometimes a combination of these two will happen those uh, we call them as the mixed compressors but majority of the engines we see these two types axial and the centrifugal yeah here uh, you can see the um, uh, these two types of the compressors and this is the axial axial compressor in the axial compressors uh, this is the uh, rotor all these are rotors and in between the rotors you will have a stator stator actually you can see my cursor here these are the stator blades as the name says rotor means it is rotating element and the stator means it's a fixed it's a fixed one so what happens is in the rotor you give the energy okay and uh, uh, it has the uh, uh, swirl velocities and all and that will be passed through the stator again uh, stator main purpose is to change the direction of the air we will see more information in the down the line there also it will increase the pressure but the majority of the pressure increase will happen in the rotors this is for the axial uh, compressor and uh, here you can see uh, this is the uh, um, flight movement if we assume this is the flight movement so the air comes here and air comes here and as it passes through the rotor and again uh, stator so it actually gives the energy and that energy here basically kinetic energy will be there that that kinetic energy will be again converted to pressure here basically so here instead of the one state one rotor and one rotor um, depending on the pressure requirements we may need the many number of uh, rotors and the stators so these are called the multi stage we will see more information in the consecutive slides but keep in your mind we have a rotating component we have a fixed component and the set of rotating and the stationary blades we call that as the stage one stage and here this shows the centrifugal uh, compressor here you can see the the blading uh, this is called as the rotating element the rotating element is called as the impeller impeller and the impeller here air comes like this and it goes like this it leaves like this so entry will be axial and the exit is radial you can see here here uh, air comes air uh, this is a inlet portion and as it goes it goes to the uh, radial direction we will see more information in the consecutive slides again so these are the two major compressors we use in the aircraft industry yeah, here uh, i am just trying to show you the the benefits of the drawbacks of the each type of the compressors centrifugal compressor versus the axial flow compressors in the centrifugal compressors we all have seen in the previous slide air flows radially in the compressor enters axially and leaves radially whereas in the axial flow compressors uh, air flows parallel to the axis of your shaft here low maintenance and running cost compared to the axial uh, flow compressors here high maintenance and the running cost a uh, low starting torque is required and here you need the uh, high starting torque uh, basically what happens is per stage the pressure raise is more here that's why 
uh, for having a same pressure ratio centrifugal compressors required the num less number of stages if it is a required stages then we go for the less number of stages here but whereas in the axial flow it requires the more number of stages many times single centrifugal compressors we prefer but sometimes we go for the um, uh, staging of the centrifugal compressors but that's uh, a very rare uh, uh, thing we used to use yeah here you can see for each stage generally you go for the um, uh, yeah, uh, here even though it is uh, mentioned as the not suitable for multi staging but if it is required then what what we do is uh, again we change the direction of the exit of the centrifugal uh, first stage then we make it axial and it goes to the next compressor but it's uh, as mentioned it is red generally we we use the single stage uh, uh, centrifugal compressors it's not so favorable for the multi staging but whereas the axial flow it's really good for the multi staging that you have seen here here this is the multi stage so from here to here air pressure will increase little bit again that that high, uh, high compressed air it goes to the next phase again further pressure increase will happen like that so it's a series of the um, um, axial compressors staging we say multi stage yeah here uh, uh, low pressure ratios it's a more suitable for the low pressure rays but here it's a um, um, high pressure rays we use the axial flow compressors in some of probably uh, uh, you know that um, the pressure ratio what we go for the um, um, axial flow compressors some some this goes to the 40 40 is to 1 it's a huge pressure ratios we go for the um, uh, axial flow compressors yeah other thing is uh, as you have seen already in the last slide centrifugal compressors requires the frontal area um, it's you know uh, uh, it's a radial so air enters axially and leaves radially so it requires the more frontal area compared to the axial flow compressors here efficiency is 80 to 82 percent but whereas the axial flow it's more compared to the centrifugal flow and the other beauty of the uh, uh, centrifugal compressor is the performance at the path load is really good here but whereas in the uh, axial flow compressors it is a comparatively poor performance compared to the centrifugal what what does it mean path load suppose you have designed for one condition but you know aircraft will not run all the time at that part, uh, designed load it goes to the different loads so whatever the load which is uh, other than the design we call that as the part load or off load off design conditions so performance is uh, good at the um, good for the centrifugal compressors for the part load but whereas uh, these are really good for the uh, design efficiencies 86 percent 82 86 to 88 percent that's really good um, for the axial flow so majority of the aircrafts we use the uh, axial flow but some of the aircrafts we see the combination of these two um, it, uh, what happens here is um, some stages they will go for the axial flow and in the last stage generally they go for the centrifugal compressors some of the engines even in Honeywell engines uh, we saw this uh, combination of these axial and the centrifugal they use but it depends on the uh, the way you design your uh, system yeah next thing is uh, let's uh, uh, again uh, recap uh, the um, uh, spooling uh, this we have already discussed in our earlier sessions spool is nothing but the um, shaft actually so single um, spool means single shaft and multi spool means you have the multi shafts okay um, it's a compressors and uh, compressor rotors and the corresponding turbine rotors coupled with a shaft. So that means if the engine has only one shaft and all the rotating components are attached to that shaft is uh, called as a single spool engine. Okay. Uh, problem here is the all the uh, uh, as all the components are uh, mounted on a single shaft the speed of the all these components are same the rpm of the rotors all the compressor rotors turbine rotors are same 
the problem here is the um, uh, this is uh, not really good for the um, efficient running but still some of the engines they use the single spool here uh, I'm just showing the single spool engine this we already covered in our um, uh, other lectures uh, uh, this is one spool or one shaft one shaft one shaft and on this shaft on this shaft all the compressors and rotor uh, ro uh, turbines are mounted okay so compressor combustion chamber turbine and the nozzle we all know that here you are having only one shaft okay and uh, uh, the other one is the uh, other design is the two spool engine as the name says it has it will have the two spools that means it has the two shafts two shafts one rotates with some speed and the other one rotates with the uh, different speed that's the uh, more useful uh, for the having the more effective more effective uh, running of the individual components so there we say um, we call them as the low pressure and the high pressure and generally uh, we discuss in the class also um, majority of the uh, GE engines are the kind of the two spool engines okay here I am just showing the uh, picture here here you can see this is one shaft the colored uh, here and the other one is the uh, another shaft here okay so this is the um, low pressure uh, low pressure um, shaft and this is the high pressure low pressure as the name says uh, low pressure in a sense initial uh, stages of the compressors and the um, final stages of the turbine are coupled to this low speed shaft whereas the other one high speed or a high pressure shaft here as the name says lateral stages of the uh, compressor and the initial stages of the turbine are coupled to this okay basically here the purpose of uh, uh, having the, uh, different spool is we will have a different uh, speeds so this will run with the one speed and this will run with the another speed we call them as the n1 and the n2 n1 n2 speeds so this is a more useful for the um, effective running of the components in line with the two spool uh, the other one is the triple spool engine as the name says uh, you will have a three spools here that means you have the three um, shafts three shaft system here uh, basically as we discussed in the class also many of the rolls royce engines are um, are triple spool engines they feel uh, this uh, uh, efficiency is uh, more uh, thing is uh, here we call them as the low pressure, intermediate pressure and high pressure and all will have the different speeds n1, n2, n3 speeds ok the, uh, here I am showing the pictorial again here it is the low pressure the innermost innermost is the low pressure and the uh, uh, intermediate one is uh, shown here intermediate, intermediate one and this is the high pressure this is a high pressure so low pressure uh, a low pressure shaft connects the your fan and the um, um, rear uh, uh, turbines uh, turbine stages which are at the last stage of the turbines and uh, uh, high pressure as the name says um, here high pressure compressor and the high pressure turbine high pressure turbine these two are coupled on one shaft and the intermediate pressure means in between the low pressure and high pressure you have the uh, uh, intermediate pressure so basically the advantage here is as you have the different uh, shafts they they can run with the different speeds so we all know that uh, for fan generally we require the bigger um, uh, blades and the low speed so that's why we use the low uh, low pressure shaft here so but the problem here is you know complexity of the system you need to have the three shafts and the arranging the three shafts and the corresponding uh, bearing arrangement and the matching the speeds all this is the um, really an art an art here yeah i will uh, uh, stop for a minute um, I, 
let me know if you have any questions or uh, you need any clarifications probably i will go through that first and uh, later we will uh, go with the rest of the presentation I am waiting for your questions. If there is any difficulty in understanding, let me know. I will clarify and then we will go further. Please drop your questions in the live chat. As I couldn't see any questions in the live chat, I am assuming you all understood. Uh, let me continue. So till now we have seen the uh, uh, the function of the compressor. Then uh, we have seen the um, uh, various um, types of the compressors. And uh, again, we also spent some time on, in understanding the spool, different spool systems, single spool, two spool, and the uh, triple spool engines and uh, a triple spool engine and corresponding the triple spool compressors basically now let's spend uh, some more time on the axial compressors today's session uh, probably uh, i will concentrate more on the axial compressors in the next uh, tomorrow's session we will go ahead with the centrifugal compressors yeah this uh, we have already seen uh, this is the intake and then you have the compressors you can see all these are the turbines, uh, sorry, compressors. These are the uh, compressor rotors, basically. You can see uh, these are the um, rotor 1, rotor 2, rotor 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it's a 17 stage, 17 stage compressors. Uh, but whereas in the turbines, it's only three stage here. So that you all know that uh, here in compressor you need more number of stages compared to the turbine because compressors you are increasing the pressure you are building the pressure but whereas in the turbine you are expanding that means you are using the pressure so this is the kind of natural process where you do not have any problem with the flow separation and all but whereas in the compressor it is against to the nature that means you are sending the air from the low pressure to high pressure so you are building the pressure there uh, you know um, if you if you aim for the very big pressure raise in uh, uh, number uh, less number of stages then th those will not really work uh, they the efficiency of the compressor uh, com uh, compressor efficiency will less and you will have the lot of problems with the flow separations so that's why we use the more number of the stages for the compressors than the turbine. Okay, these are the some of the um, uh, pictures you can see here. Uh, this we have already covered. 
so this is the kind of the flow and it goes through this okay and you will have a rotor and then beneath uh, besides the rotor you will have a stator so rotor and stator jointly we call that as one stage stage and here you can see so many rotors so many rotors and the um, uh, actually um, this is called as the multi stage multi stage engine but uh, the principles are same uh, uh, if you understand the one stage the same thing will repeat for the other stages okay yeah uh, again uh, even in the axial compressors we classify further uh, some are called as the fans and blowers uh, some are called as subsonic transonic and supersonic as the name says fans and blowers major job is not really building the pressure they main job is to suck the air to suck the air not the pressure raise pressure raise is the not important thing for the fans fans are blowers the pressure raise across the fan is very limited very minimum but uh, uh, the major function is to suck the air as much as required then subsequent stages the pressure will build up okay and the other thing uh, as a name says uh, supersonic uh, compressor uh, uh, sorry subsonic means as a name says uh, those run uh, where the uh, velocities are uh, uh, lesser than the sonic transonic compressors and the supersonic compressors so depending on the need we will go for the uh, different uh, compressors okay yeah again uh, uh, some more pictures uh, here it's very very important uh, to know the um, pressure and velocity variation across the rotor and stator here in this picture you are seeing the um, um, multi stage compressors and the other thing is uh, we all know that as the flow flows from the low pressure uh, here this is the low pressure basically and as you move forward then it is the high pressure so when you go for the high pressure obviously it's the same mass flow rate and you are building the pressure so the volume requirement will be less so that's why you are seeing the longer blades here and as you go forward and you will require the smaller blades so this is the small blade you can see here small blades and these are the um, uh, disc actually disc which carry the your uh, blades these are the blades are rotors okay here uh, this is the rotor and uh, this is the uh, stator and the corresponding the pressure what happens and the velocity what happens you can just see here as the air enters there will be inlet we are uh, we already had a sufficient discussion in the classes initial classes uh, there will be intake and from the intake now it is going through the rotor and stator if you see here um, initially there is the uh, uh, decrease in the um, uh, pressure here that's uh, uh, this is the inlet portion basically okay and from there uh, uh, across the rotor and stator the pressure will increase pressure is increasing here continuously increasing but whereas the velocity if you see here velocity in the rotor you will import some velocity okay just see corresponding thing corresponding to this this is a rotor this is corresponding to the rotor and this is a stator this is a corresponding to the stator okay so if you see what you can understand is velocity when it comes to the velocity the air velocity will increase in the rotor and that will be reduced in the stator and this reduction will be used to increase the pressure it's a kind it's a something like your nozzle reducing the velocity increasing the pressure but whereas in the rotor we are giving the energy so that energy is used to increase the pressure and increase the velocity okay so when it comes to the one stage you are here so what you need to understand here is whatever you increase here that entire increase you are reducing here and you are bringing again to the initial so that's the uh, beauty of the stage and that air again it goes to the next rotor stator rotor stator rotor stator like this it will continue so that means at the end of the compressors 
the velocity velocity will be more or less same as your inlet velocity but the pressure will build up pressure will build up okay so pressure ratio from here to here it will increase increase further increase further increase further like this okay and it's the same thing here uh, igv is uh, called as the inlet guide vane inlet guide vane the as the name says it's guiding the guiding the flow then onwards you have the r1 r1 is the rotor one s1 is the stator one r2 s2 r3 s3 r stands for the rotor s stands for the stator okay so this is how uh, uh, it works yeah uh, yeah uh, here uh, uh, only the first stage you will have the guide vanes but then after you don't require any guide vanes the stator itself guide okay so this is the uh, this is a rotor and this is a stator and uh, jointly one rotor and one stator we call that as a one stage okay and here again each rotor and stator uh, it's like uh, your aerofiles and designing of rotor blades and stator blades we are not covering uh, uh, that in subject but keep in your mind Th uh, those are also looks like your um, uh, propeller or fan blade it looks it, it will have the profile basically aerofile profile so uh, a rotor blade uh, row followed by a stator blade row so it's a one row row means one uh, complete um, 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 cylinder basically uh, uh, you can see here this is entire thing this entire thing is called one row and this is a second row third row like that stator blades as the name says it's fixed to the outer casing so that will not move at all and the rotating blades means that, uh, as the name says those are the rotating parts so compressor will have the both rotating components and the uh, stationary component basically Now let's um, try to understand the compression process on the TS diagram or HS diagram, temperature and the entropy diagram. The compression process uh, which is there in the compressor follows the isentropic process. Uh, in reality it's not isentropic, it is the adiabatic process. Adiabatic process means there is no heat supply. Only you are adding the energy that uh, there you have the uh, work interactions not really the heat interaction heat interaction in a sense you are not supplying the uh, heat but the air temperature will increase air temperature will increase that's what you are seeing here here compressor uh, this is the um, um, state 1 and state 2 and basically uh, these are the constant pressure lines constant pressure lines uh, uh, we all know that compressor purpose is to raise the pressure that means uh, here to here we are raising if it is isentropic it is the vertical line because the entropy entropy constant means vertical line isentropic process will be like this but in reality uh, we will not have because of the friction and uh, uh, other interactions so that's why what happens is instead of like this it goes like this we are raising from P01 to P02, but not isentropically. This is adiabatically. This is adiabatically. Okay. So pressure raise uh, along with the pressure raise, temperature also will raise. P01 to P2. The same thing when you see in the turbine, it's in the other way. Turbine is the expansion process. Suppose you were. Uh, uh, um, inlet to the turbine is this stage and uh, uh, a stage after the after the stage this is the outlet condition so this is the expansion process in the expansion process pressure will come down P01 to P02 this is like this turbine and this is the isentropic process we are supposed to get like this but the adiabatic process this is like this So uh, you all know that about the stagnation condition. Uh, that's we already spent sufficient time 
what is the stagnation conditions so uh, in reality uh, more or less the uh, principles of the compressor or turbine are more same but only thing keep in your mind compressor is the increasing the pressure that's the you are um, adding the pressure you are giving the energy to the uh, fluid whereas in the turbine you are extracting the energy from the fluid that's the expansion process so the, uh, only the, you can see here this is the uh, going up pressure is increasing whereas the turbine pressure will come down so whatever the concepts we are going to discuss it's more or less same for compressors and turbines and this is the another way of uh, uh, looking uh, basically the same thing whatever we have shown in the last slide it's a more uh, same thing but here what we are trying to show you is the um, one stage one stage in the sense one rotor and the one rotor uh, stator so this we call that as a stage so the air is coming like this and this is the rotor entry this is the rotor entry and this is the rotor exit rotor exit is nothing but the stator entry and the three corresponds to the stator exit stator exit uh, sorry uh, here this picture is uh, uh, not visible completely but what what, uh, what you need to just uh, keep in mind 1 to 2 1 to 2 is the uh, rotor 1 to 2 you can see here 1 to 2 is the rotor and 2 to 3 is the 2 to 3 2 to 3 is the your stator part 2 to 3 we we have seen in the last uh, last uh, uh, slide 1 to 2 there will be increase in the pressure and again 2 to 3 also there will be increase in pressure so this is uh, these are the pressure lines pressure 1 pressure 2 and pressure 3 pressure 3 here okay pressure 1 pressure 2 and pressure 3 and these are the stagnation corresponding stagnation pressures these are the static pressures and these are the stagnation pressures actually not always uh, p not uh, zero or not means it's a stagnation we all know that the difference between the uh, uh, this and this is majorly from the velocity whatever the dynamic head your uh, your uh, your uh, fluid is having you are converting that into the pressure so that's why these are the p not one line and p naught 2 and p naught 3 okay so if you really see here p naught 2 and p naught 3 are same okay and uh, sorry it is not really clear uh, probably i will update this picture once again but you just keep in your mind this is for the here i have just shown the um, uh, one uh, rotor but here i am trying to show you the stage rotor plus stator Uh, again now isentropic efficiency we all know that this is a way we um, uh, we define isentropic enthalpy raise which is supposed to be there for the if the process follows the isentropy so this much is the energy required this much is the energy but in reality there will be friction and there will be some uh, heat in interactions so based on that now instead of putting this much energy we are putting this much energy p naught one two p naught two p naught two okay this way so this is the actual enthalpy raise and this is the isentropic enthalpy raise isentropic uh, isentropic enthalpy raise is always less compared to the uh, your actual so we try to reach to the isentropic but uh, in reality it will not happen because of the, your uh, frictional losses so this is the way of uh, representing the efficiency isentropic efficiency uh, uh, there are many ways of the defining the efficiencies uh, for the compressors total to total total to static static to static there are different ways but at this moment um, uh, don't um, get uh, um, trouble because uh, uh, I don't I don't think it is required for you at this moment to understand all those things but here we just keep in your mind this is the isentropic efficiency okay h naught 2 s minus uh, not is always uh, uh, stagnation properties h naught 2 s minus h naught 1 divided by h naught 2 minus h naught 1 this is the kind of the total total to total 
not always as mentioned stagnation means it's total total enthalpy so total enthalpy raised uh, corresponding to the isentropic process divided by actual enthalpy raise what we are supplying to the uh, disk uh, your compressor so this is the isentropic efficiency and you just convert that into the temperatures you will get like this uh, instead of h naught 2 s i can write the tp uh, cp into t naught 2 s minus t naught 1 okay this is the simple um, um, uh, derivation here so ultimately what you need to uh, uh, note down here is the that um, along with the pressure uh, that temperature also increases here the temperature raise is given by this equation yeah now we will spend some time on understanding the velocity triangles velocity polygons are velocity triangle okay now uh, for uh, two dimensional if i take the one cross section and you have a rotor here and you have a rotor here and this this is the another rotor in between the rotors you will have a stator stator here and stator here okay now what happens here is air flows like this air flows it goes through the um, uh, the space between the two rotors okay this is the uh, what i'm trying to show you is uh, yeah this part this part i am showing in the horizontal direction that means here uh, this is one rotor and this is another rotor now air flows in between the these rotors okay in between these rotors and that air will go to the this stator so that's what we are showing here yeah this is the uh, uh, one uh, row of blade uh, row of the uh, rotor and this is the uh, stator so what happens air comes like this it uh, goes through the space between the uh, two blades in a row and the same air is going to the stator here so here uh, 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 be careful in understanding the velocity triangle uh, we are giving the this is the rotor it has the some rotational velocity okay and that velocity uh, is given as the u blade peripheral velocity in a tangential plane and the ca uh, you know uh, in uh, different books they use the different uh, notation but uh, this is um, one of the um, generally used notation i am showing here uh, but uh, more or less all will be same but uh, uh, people prefer to use the different uh, um, symbols for the different things but here keep uh, we are using ca ca is the axial velocity cw w is the whirl or tangential velocity what does it mean here this is the uh, this is the, your actual flow actual flow is uh, coming with the uh, with the direction suppose alpha 1 this is the um, uh, angle uh, this is the actual flow which is entering into the your rotor that is given by this c1 c1 that means this is the um, um, uh, it's a kind of uh, if you uh, it's a kind of angle of attack actually basically flow angle we say if it is a have a, instead of the um, um, axial completely let us assume that it is uh, entering with the c1 fluid is entering with a velocity of c1 when the uh, when the uh, velocity is uh, when the air is coming along this way now our rotor is rotating this is rotating like this this is rotating like this okay and that gives the uh, velocity u that uh, that gives the velocity u so ultimately what happens is now here you have the c1 here and you have the u here you just keep this is in the ulta direction c1 is the actual flow direction but u is the your blade velocity so ultimately what happens is the air enters with this velocity 
uh, which is called as relative velocity basically v is the relative velocity basically okay so c1 is the actual flow velocity but u is the blade velocity c1 and u so ultimately this is the resultant velocity this is this is the components and this is the resultant velocity so v1 the air really enters into the blade with the velocity v1 this is called as the relative velocity okay and the, uh, that velocity now that velocity is uh, uh, going through the, this stator that velocity is going to the stator so what happens here so that is the uh, just imagine now air is trying to come and your uh, your rotor is rotating so obviously air will come like this and it takes the again uh, in the stator it takes the direction again here this is the same relative velocity but uh, what happens is it leaves with the c2 velocity and this is the axial component this is the axial component this is the axial component and this is the tangential component in the direction of the rotation we call that as the tangential component tangential component so this is this is the velocity triangle from the inlet to the exit inlet to the exit alpha 1 is the inlet flow angle alpha 2 is the outlet outlet angle okay beta 1 and beta 2 are the uh, i will show in the next slides i think uh, okay uh, here i have not really shown these are with the um, uh, flow angle uh, blade angles we say flow angle and the blade angle relative angles we say Uh, is there any difficulty in understanding this if uh, probably if there is any difficulty maybe i will try to show some more pictures in the uh, tomorrow's session it's basically what we are trying to understand is air is coming with some velocity but um, your rotor is rotating with a different velocity so obviously the air which enters into the your rotor will have the different velocities so that we are obtaining from the velocity triangle that's the resultant of the vectors so this is the air inlet vector velocity vector and this is your blade rotation blade rotation so obviously the resultant will be like this the resultant velocity will be like this and the same thing now when it is leaving out when it is leaving out then it takes the it takes the way here so this is the outlets the same c2 the c2 is the exit exit of the rotor and, and that, that will enter into your stator, stator here, here. Stator. This is the inlet velocity triangle, exit velocity triangle. Ultimately, there is a change in the your tangential velocity. Tangential velocity is CW1 here when you are entering and when you are leaving. This is the CW2. This is called as swivel angle. As the name says, swivel. How much turning? How much turning you are having? Swirl angle. Swirl or angle, we call that as tangential component. So that creates the um, work action. So uh, here what happens is, so that change in the um, viral, uh, viral, uh, viral velocity, as viral velocity, that causes the that uh, that's how you are giving the energy to the your fluid tangential component okay now from the newton's second law of motion uh, this is this is the torque what we are supplying to the um, uh, your uh, compressor compressor rotor so that energy is given to the uh, fluid by changing the its angular momentum angular momentum the moment is changing 
So that's the uh, given by the that's the uh, momentum. You all know that um, rate of change of uh, angular momentum. This is the mass flow rate, and uh, m m dot into c w two gives the momentum, right? M dot in mass into velocity gives the momentum. So m dot c w two is the outlet. Same mass flow rate is going from the inlet to the outlet, and c w two is the variable velocity at the outlet. So this is the um, exit momentum. Suppose it is entering with uh, some radius that is uh, exit radius. This is the angular momentum we say. This is the momentum linear momentum. When you are multiplying with the radius, that you see angular momentum. So the rate of change of moment angular momentum is called as the torque. So m dot c w two r two is the um, uh, exit uh, angular momentum. And m dot c w one r one is the inlet angular momentum. So the difference of those two, uh, m dot as you are giving this is per second. So that gives the rate of change of angular momentum. So torque, whatever the torque you are submitting or giving, that changes your velocities c w two and c w one. C w one is uh, dictated from the inlet, and uh, corresponding you are changing c w two. And the power is equal to torque into angular speed. That is nothing but the T into omega. So ultimately, uh, this is the formula you are ending up. So this is the um, compressor work. The work what we are working uh, supplying to the fluid. That is compressor work. Compressor work is given by m dot into u two c w two minus u one c w one. Okay. This is u u two c w uh, this is c r omega r omega r is nothing but the u omega you know that uh, pi m by sixty is the your omega uh, sorry sorry two pi m by sixty I'm sorry two pi m by sixty is the uh, your omega and two pi r uh, uh, that gives the uh, Uh, your u velocity direction. So pi dm is sixty basically. So pi dm is sixty gives you. So work is uh, obtained from this equation. So this is a kind of the control volume, and you are taking the inlet to the exit. So what is the change in the angular momentum? This is what we are we are obtaining. See the table one, see the table two. Uh, let me pause a minute here. Uh, please let me know if you have any difficulty.
Yeah. Yeah. Here, uh, omega is uh, 2 pi by 16. So, when you are multiplying omega with uh, r, so 2r is nothing but d. So, what happens is uh, this becomes the pi d n by 16. 2r is nothing but d. So, 2r becomes d, uh, then pi n d, so pi d n by 16 will come. Pi d n by 16 is nothing but u. So, that's what we are doing. U here. We are multiplying and you are getting the u here. Any questions here? Yeah, uh, I think uh, I missed some of the questions here. I am seeing some questions from Anirudh. Uh, uh, what is the load in this slide? What is the path load? The difference between the centrifugal and the uh, compressor. Basically, path load is, uh, uh, as we mentioned, it is different from the design load. Aircraft will not have the same load for all the times. So, that we call that as the path load. And the second question I am seeing here is the um, work of the compressor is a mix of the air and fuel at high pressure. No, 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 there is no fuel actually. In the uh, uh, compressor part, there will not be any fuel. Only air, whatever it sucks from the atmosphere, that will be sent to the compressor. Compressor will uh, add pressure, will give the energy basically to the air that becomes the high pressure. There is no fuel. Fuel will be supplied only in the combustor. Fuel will be supplied only in the combustor. Till that time there is no fuel. It's air only. Uh, I am seeing some comment from Jack. Uh, audio is not clear. It's echoing. Uh, do we have the problem? Probably when I stop the... Uh, Speaking, then probably you are getting the echo of my CPU sound. Otherwise, I feel um, it will be all right. Is there any difficulty in the sound? Okay, if there are no questions, I will go further. So, this is called as the Euler turbine equation. So, this is the work. 
uh, uh, though the name says it's a turbine but it's the same thing for the compressor also so work done in the case of the compressor we say work is done on the fluid in the case of the turbine work is extracted from the fluid but it's the same so work is equal to m dot u2 cw2 minus u1 cw1 u2 is the tangential velocity outlet tangential velocity u1 is the initial tangent velocity whereas in the case of the turbine it will be volt yeah so in the compressor so this is always greater than uh, zero uh, per unit mass if you are doing we call that as a specific specific work work per unit mass flow rate and uh, uh, for a turbine again it's in the volta volta means this will come obviously inlet has the more energy outlet will have the lesser energy that's how you will get u1 cw1 minus u2 cw2 so this is for the turbine this is for the compressor and this is for the turbine but uh, principles are same only so this is the another way of looking uh, eiler turbine basically this is the uh, some simplification uh, u uh, w dot equal to u2 cw2 minus u1 cw1 uh, for the axial compressors suppose u1 is equal to u2 inlet and the outlet it is a uh, uh, it is leaving at the same radius then u1 is equal to u2 if you substitute here if you substitute here then you will end up something like w is equal to uca into tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2 or otherwise tan alpha 2 minus tan alpha 1 this is obtained from the velocity triangle you can see here yeah beta 1 tan beta is this part na? this part u minus uh, this is this entire thing is u and this is a cw1 and this part will become the u minus cw1 okay tan of theta is equal opposite side by adjacent side that's what we do it's the looking the different uh, uh, way uh, basically and ultimately you will end up with uh, w is equal to work done uh, equal to uca times tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2 the other way is uh, this part actually u by ca uh, sorry it's not typed properly uh, this u by ca you get from these are the trigonometric equations you get from the velocity triangle you just try once you will get it so this is the ultimate um, work done work done this we have seen the last slide so that becomes the uh, the other way is a change in the enthalpy basically that's a change in the enthalpy so that you can obtain from this equation so total pressure ratio from the stage stage means uh, rotor and stator p not 1 to p not 3 3 means stage P not, 1 to 2 is the rotor, 2 to 3 is the stator. So 3 to 1, that means it's a stage. For the entire stage, this is the equation. Stage isentropic efficiency. And here, uh, uh, this is the velocity diagram what we have seen now. Uh, uh, in the uh, last slide uh, if you see here uh, some manipulations what we are doing is a CA1 CA is the axial velocity this is the axial component CA square is equal to C1 square minus uh, CW1 square how it is this is from the um, uh, you know uh, this is a right angle triangle in the right angle triangle C1 square equal to CW1 square plus uh, uh, CA1 square so from that hypotenuse this becomes the hypotenuse and this is the opposite side and the adjacent side so this is from the uh, this triangle okay and uh, that uh, C1 you can uh, uh, again convert that into W1s you can see here 
So the relations, what you get from here is the uh, uh, this is a beta one. This is a relative velocity. Just keep in your mind, this is the absolute velocities, and the W is the relative velocity. Relative velocity is the velocity with which it's really entering into the your blade. And uh, some simplifications, if you do here, so ultimately we will end up something like u2 c w2 is equal to like this. So this is this part we use in the work basically. So that depends on the uh, your uh, velocities, your blade velocity. That means it is a rotation pi dn by 60. This is with a rotation, and the the flow with which it is entering. That depends on the your W. So ultimately, you will end up something like this. Work done is equal to half times uh, uh, this. You are just uh, uh, converting that into the previous slide. Whatever we discuss, if you substitute the what what we have what I have shown here, what I have shown here, I am just substituting here. This we know that work done formula. In the work done formula, we are just keeping those things. So ultimately, the work is equal to mass times uh, mass flow rate times half times c two square plus u two square minus w two square minus c one square w u uh, one square minus w one square. So these these are the inlet conditions, and these are for the uh, exit condition. So what it means basically? So if I Join these two uh, uh, simplification c2 square plus c1 square uh, or minus minus will come basically, and uh, so ultimately you will end up like this. Specific work is equal c2 square minus c1 square by two plus w1 square minus w2 square by two plus u2 square minus u1 square by two. Uh, I request you to practice this once at least uh, 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 today. and probably if you have any difficulty i will explain you once again tomorrow session so what happens is here c2 square minus c1 square by 2 and w1 square minus w2 square by 2 that means change in the absolute velocity okay this is something like kinetic energy of mv square the m is not there because uh, you have taken the specific So this is kinetic term again. This is another term. This is a third term. So one these terms here we try to mention. C two square minus C one square by two. This term represents the dynamic enthalpy change in the turbo machine. It appears from the expansion that the maximum um, specific work. So what you want, uh, what what we need to understand is to to supply the more work. to supply the more work you need to give you need to raise these terms you need to raise these terms that means if you want to supply the more work you can increase your diameter or you can increase your uh, speed and you can change your flow angles then combination of those will raise your specific work so this is called as the dynamic enthalpy dynamic means it's related to your velocities and w1 and w2 those corresponds to the static enthalpy change okay and the uh, this is again a uh, static enthalpy change okay so as it mentioned here this depends on your diameter and the speed so however u2 would be possible if the exit of the fluid occurs at high radius leading to maximum work delivered what it means is if you take the air at the low radius and deliver it high radius it gives you the more energy u2 u2 is the exit u2 means pi dn by 2 or pi d2 n2 by 2 Okay, so suppose you are taking the fluid at low radius, low radius, and delivering at the high radius, you will have the more contribution from this term. That's what we use in the centrifugal compressors. 
okay yeah uh, probably I will stop here at this moment uh, uh, I know that it might be little difficult for you my request is to practice once if you have any difficulty we will discuss once again in the tomorrow's um, session then we will go further what is that work done factor these things we will discuss tomorrow I will stop at this moment please let me know if you have any questions Today we try to cover the uh, uh, what's the compressor sir, what are the functions of the compressor. Then um, we try to see the uh, different types of the compressors. Then we try to understand the velocity, uh, velocity triangle. And, and then, then we, we try, try to understand, understand the energy equation. equation. So that's the turbine equation. equation. Either uh, that's basically um, Proposal from the Euler, Eulerian, basically. Euler turbine equation. Yeah, uh, Any questions, please uh, drop your questions in the chat box. I will send you the uh, uh, presentation what I am doing, uh, what we are going through now. Please practice once and if you have any difficulty, uh, I'm happy to help you. Any questions? I'm not seeing any question. I don't know whether it's uh, completely understood or uh, nothing is understood from today's class. If it's completely understood, I'm really happy. But otherwise, put some efforts. I'm sending you the presentation through mail go through that and let me know uh, practice that and if you have any difficulty we will work out tomorrow
if there are no questions i will stop here thanks for joining now we will continue our session in the uh, tomorrow's i'm signing off thank you